OK, so the next topic is linear transforms. So suppose we have uh, uh, U and V. These are two vector spaces over a field F. Then a mapping from U to V is said to be a linear map if two conditions hold. or a transform if one f of u1 plus u2 equals f of u1 plus f of u2 for all u1 u2 in this ve first vector space and the second is that f of lambda u is equal to lambda f of u for all lambda belonging to this field and u belonging to this set u, vector space u. So these are the two conditions that define a linear transform. Often this is written compactly as f of a1 u1 plus a to u2 is equal to a1 f of u1 plus a to f of u2 for all a1 a2 in this field f and uh, u1 u2 in this vector space u but this is just another way of writing it so you may or may not agree that this is a more compact way to me this is a slightly more intuitive way of writing it Okay, so um, some some properties of a linear transform are that uh, the values um, of f over uh, uh, on some basis of u. completely defines F. OK, that's because um, every U um, in this uh, vector space capital U is a linear combination of the basis. And F is a linear transform. So if you can write it as a linear combination, then if you know what values F takes on the basis, then you can find its value for any other U that belongs to this vector space capital U. Second thing is that zero always maps to zero. So one way to see it is if you just substitute lambda equals zero here, you have lambda times f of u, whatever f of u is, this is zero, and lambda times u is always the zero vector. And so one very important property is that any a in r to the m by n is uh, a linear transform f 
from r to the n to r to the m and vice versa. And another property is that matrix multiplication. This is something I mentioned in the previous class also. Matrix multiplication is the corresponds to a composition of linear transforms. Sir, one doubt. Uh, this yes, yes. can you hear me? Uh, this uh, the previous property you uh, told that uh, uh, the linear transform from R N to R M and vice versa. What is meant by that? Vice versa part means R M to R M. No, no, no. I don't understand that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a good question. So uh, any matrix A is a linear transform from R N to R M, and vice okay. versa means that. Any linear transform from Rn to Rm is can a. be represented as a matrix A. Okay, okay, thank you. Sir, uh, okay. can you please you know, explain that part again? The value taken by F on some basis of U completely determines F. Okay. So suppose the suppose this U has a basis. U1 through U1. And so F of UN. So suppose I know these N vectors, then any U in Capital U as U equal to alpha one U one plus plus alpha n. We've seen that this representation is unique. There's a unique linear combination which gets you to U when U one to U n is a basis for it is space capital U. So by linearity f of u is f of alpha 1 u1 plus alpha n un which is equal to alpha 1 f of u1 plus alpha n f of un which is equal to alpha 1 v1 plus alpha n vn. So this is what I mean by saying that the values taken by F on the basis completely determines um, F on all vectors in capital U. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, is there any relation between basis of U, basis of V and the function? Suppose if U and V are of same dimension. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to talk about now. Vector spaces associated with a linear transform. So you might have heard this rank nullity theorem. Okay, and uh, this is closely related to that. So I'm going to talk about that now. OK, before that, maybe I'll make a couple of remarks. So one thing is that the way I define this linear transform here, it's a transform from U to V. 
and uh, it satisfies these properties. Now, uh, it's possible that there are some points in V which, uh, uh, which are not reachable as f of u for any value of u. What I'm trying to say is that um, the way it's defined here, u and v are two arbitrary vector spaces. And uh, uh, f of, uh, and not every small v in this vector space capital V needs to be, uh, is, is required to be reachable by taking f of u for some u in capital U. Okay, so, um, so that is one point. Another point is that, uh, as you can see uh, from here, if u has this basis u1 through un, and I take v1 through vn, then any u in capital U can be written as a linear combination of these vectors. And so if I consider only the points that can be that, that have an inverse map in capital U. So as I mentioned, not every point in capital V needs to have an inverse map small u. Okay. But if I only consider the points in capital V that do have an inverse map small u, that you can show is also a vector space. And now that vector space you can see already that any point in that vector space can be written as a linear combination of V1 to Vn. But now it's not clear that, of course it's clear that U1 through Un are linearly independent. They're a basis for capital U. But it's not clear that V1 to Vn are going to be linearly independent. Moreover, any V which is reachable from this vector space U can always be written as a linear combination of V1 to Vn. So V1 to Vn certainly span this set of vectors that are reachable from this set U under this linear linear map F. But this, this could be an overcomplete uh, set. In other words, it's, poss it's possible that there's a subset of these vectors which span that space. But it cannot be more than N. So the dimension of the space that can be spanned by this u under this linear map f can be at most n if n is the dimension of u. You cannot increase dimension by using a linear map. But it's possible that you end up decreasing dimension. So does this mean that uh, the uh, v is need not be a basis? v1 to vn need not be a basis for the space spanned by u under this uh, transformation f. Okay. That's correct. Thank you. Okay, so um, the first space associated with the linear transform is what is called the range space or the column space. So now I'm going to refer to these linear transforms as matrices because this particular thing is easier stated using matrices. Um, so, and uh, because uh, any matrix can be viewed as a linear transform and any linear transform can be viewed as a matrix. We can also discuss about matrices. So range space. Which is also known as the column space. So that's defined as R of A which is the set of all vectors in R to the M. So let me say A is in R to the M by N. Y is equal to AX. X is in R to the N. It's the span of the columns of A. It is a subset of R to the M. Every vector here belongs to R to the M. In fact, it's a vector space. Now, the dimension 
of the range space of A is less than or equal to min of M and N. Why is that? Because it is a subspace of R to the M, right? It's a subset of R to the M, it's a sub so it can have dimension at most M. And this matrix A has only N columns. And so if you write Y equal to AX with N columns, you can have uh, at most N linearly independent vectors in the span of the columns of A. This of the range space of A is also called what? Rank of A. Exactly. Thank you. OK, so for example, if I have A equal to 1, 2, 3, 5, 4, 3, and 3, 3, 3, then the range space or the column space of A is the set of all linear combinations of any two columns of A. Notice that if I add these two columns and divide by two, I get the third column. So these, th these three columns are not linearly independent. So only two of them are, any two of them are linearly independent. So you can take the first and second, second and third, or first and third, any two columns. And the set of all linear combinations of those two columns is the range space of A. And its, uh, its dimension is two, okay? Which in this case is actually strictly smaller than the min of m and n. m is two, m is three and n is also three here. This is a map from r to the three to r to the three. And the dimension of, or the rank of this matrix A is two. So here's a small thing you should do on your own is, Actually, uh, I'll, maybe I'll say the subspace of R to the N, of R to the M. So in other words, it satisfies those two properties we discussed the previous class. Okay, it's Hotel sure. California. You can never leave any two vectors in R of A. Uh, if you take their sum, that also belongs to R of A. And if you scale a vector in R of A, that also belongs to R of A. Yes, go ahead. Uh, sir, I have a small confusion. So given a two pair of vectors uh, with a different dimension, I can always find a matrix A, uh, which will, you know, transform, uh, let's say, vector B to vector A. So, uh, I mean, then, uh, does it mean that, I mean, uh, transformation is always linear in nature? I mean, so. So you're saying that um, given V1, say, in R to the N, yeah. and V2 in R to the M, yeah. you can always find A such that V2 equals A V1. Yes, sir. Yeah, so that's correct. So, in fact, you can find many such A's. But so what's the point? What 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 is your so, confusion? Uh, so so my confusion is that uh, is transformations always linear in nature? I mean there is, uh, I mean uh, because no, you know some so transformations. This, no no what this means is that you can find a linear transform that maps v1 to v2. It doesn't mean that way you can map v1 to v2. And secondly, okay, there can be some non-linear transformations, right? 
um, I, I don't want to do, uh, look for that right now. It may not be easy to find a nonlinear transform. But OK, here is here is an example. Suppose I had V1 equal to 1, 2, 3. And V2 equal to 1, 4, 9. OK, now I can always define a transform. F of V equal to. I'll, I'm going to use MATLAB's notation here. Dot power 2. What this is doing is it's taking the square of every element in V. This is a nonlinear transform which clearly maps V1 to V2. OK, so it need not be a linear map. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we can find uh, matrix A as well to do this transformation, right? So. Yes. In fact, you can find many such matrices because you only have one constraint. You're giving me one point in R to the N and you're giving one point in R to the M and you're asking me to find a matrix A that will map V1 to V2. Of course, this is going to map other vectors to some other points. But in fact, I can I can find an A that will map if you give me, say, <coughs> um, if you give me a set of vectors in R to the N, and another set of vectors in R to the M. I can ask, is it possible to find an A that will map the first set of vectors one by one to the second set of vectors? OK, so um, to answer that question is not uh, immediate from what we've discussed so far. So you should keep that question in your mind and revisit it later. So I'll write it here. You can think about it later. So given say u1 through uk in r to the n and v1 through vk in r to the m can we find A in R to the M by N such that U I sorry, V I is equal to A U I I equal to one. Okay, so this is a very basic question. Um, but uh, I don't want to answer it right now. Uh, it's something to keep in mind and you can revisit it later. OK, sir. There are conditions under which this is possible and uh, under some conditions it's not possible. OK. okay. Sir, uh, may I uh, ask a question? Yes. Uh, sir, uh, the thing that he told that uh, uh, and the element wise square operation that you uh, showed as an example of nonlinear transformation. Yes. So uh, if we want to uh, take any V1 and get to any V2, uh, maintaining the relationship uh, that you uh, told that element wise square. So it is not uh, possible to find any unique A, right? Because A is not a nonlinear, means oh. matrix can't be a nonlinear transformation. Of course, uh, this kind of nonlinear transform, first of all, you cannot express it as uh, multiplying by a matrix A. So this can never be written as AV. Yes. Okay, for some matrix A. Yes, sir. For general case, we can't find any such A. 